Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Of all the planets in the inner solar system, perhaps none have proved more puzzling to scientists on Earth than Venus. On close examination, we see that almost nothing about the planet makes sense from a conventional viewpoint. From the extraordinary movements of Venus's atmosphere, at speeds up to 60 times faster than the planet's rotation, to its extraordinary superbolts of lightning, vastly more powerful and prolific than lightning on Earth, to its super hot temperatures, well over 800 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough at the planet's surface to melt lead, to the mysterious vortices seen wandering at the planet's poles, to its vast, stringy cometary tail stretching for millions of miles sometimes even touching the Earth's orbit. Countless unresolved mysteries on Venus demand entirely new theoretical pathways. A scientific paper published this year in Nature Astronomy only deepens the mysteries. A team analyzing data from the ESA's Venus Express mission have discovered a mystery in the darkness of Venus's nightside atmosphere. Of course, the planet's aforementioned superfast winds have long been a puzzle for planetary scientists. Lead author, astrophysicist Javier Peralta says of the enduring mystery, We've spent decades studying these super-rotating winds by tracking how the upper clouds move on Venus's day side. These are clearly visible in images acquired in ultraviolet light. However, our models of Venus remain unable to reproduce this super-rotation, which clearly indicates that we might be missing some pieces of this puzzle. Using the Visible and Infrared Thermal Imaging Spectrometer, or VIRTUS, instrument, the team gained new insights into what happens to these winds on the planet's night side, which remains hidden in darkness for hundreds of days. They found that Venus's tremendous, baffling winds are even, quote, more chaotic on its night side than on its day side. They had expected just the opposite. As described on ScienceAlert.com, Existing models of the atmosphere have predicted superrotation largely occurred the same way on both Venus's day and night sides. But the new infrared perspective shows the whirling Venusian winds are actually more irregular and chaotic when hidden from the sun. As seen in this image, the most puzzling feature to the scientists is the filamentary patterns seen in these clouds, which are not seen on the planet's day side. The team characterizes the phenomena as essentially a type of gravity waves, in this case what they refer to as stationary waves. One of the researchers states, Stationary waves are probably what we'd call gravity waves. In other words, rising waves generated lower in Venus's atmosphere that appear not to move with the planet's rotation. These waves are concentrated over steep, mountainous areas of Venus. This suggests that the planet's topography is affecting what happens way up above in the clouds. However, the scientists are forced to acknowledge some of the problems with this theory. As the Science Alert article states, Virtus observed areas in Venus's southern hemisphere, which is generally low in elevation, but the team says gravity waves still influence the atmospheric movements. But strangely enough, there was no evidence of them in the lower cloud levels, up to 50 kilometers above the surface. Team member Ricardo Hueso states, It's an unexpected result for sure, and we'll all need to revisit our models of Venus to explore its meaning. From the electric universe perspective, the striking filamentary clouds are simply due to electric currents in the Venusian ionosphere. It has long been known that the solar wind interacts directly with the ionosphere. And of course, filaments are the forms we see when electric currents travel through plasmas. The concentration of the filamentary clouds on high mountaintops is also a prediction of the electrical interpretation. For many years, planetary scientists have sought to explain the bright mountaintops of Venus, which reflect radar signals. Some scientists have proposed that the mountains are covered by a, quote, heavy metal frost. However, in 2003, Physicist Wal Thornhill wrote in an article on his website, hollowscience.com, A much simpler answer is that diffuse electric discharge, known on Earth as St. Elmo's fire, occurs preferentially at the higher altitudes of the mountains on Venus. In that thick atmosphere, it forms a highly conductive dense plasma, which is a superb reflector of radar signals. 
The difference between the day and night side phenomena on Venus may be due to the comet-like electrical interaction feeding Birkeland currents into the planet's so-called magnetotail. Magnetic turbulence on the night side can then be the effect driving the chaotic winds. In the Electric Universe view of Venus, it is not a coincidence that Venus today shows such similarities to a comet. In fact, following the hypothesis that was first proposed by Emmanuel Velikovsky in his book Worlds in Collision, it has always been the position of the chief principles of the Thunderbolts project that Venus once appeared in the earthly sky as a terrifying comet. Before the earliest space probes imaged the surface of Venus, a number of scientists most notably Fred Whipple, the originator of the Dirty Snowball Hypothesis, had predicted that Venus would be covered with oceans. Instead, of course, Venus is extraordinarily hot and dry, and its surface is blanketed with networks of filamentary scars, matching the form of so-called Lichtenberg patterns produced by electrical discharge. Today, Venus has a much more direct electrical connection to the Sun than the Earth, and it is this relationship that holds the key to understanding its bizarre atmospheric and weather phenomena. As mentioned, the predictions of the Electric Universe for Venus are much different than those of standard planetary science. In 2005, physicist Wal Thornhill offered such a radical prediction in his analysis of the North Polar Vortex on Venus. Professor Ross Taylor said of the Vortex's discovery, the absence of viable theories which can be tested, or in this case, any theory at all, leaves us uncomfortably in doubt as to our basic ability to understand even gross features of planetary atmospheric circulations. It was Thornhill's position that such vortices would inevitably be found at both poles of the planet, though only the one at the North Pole had been observed at the time. He wrote, we should expect to see evidence of the twisted pair configuration at the poles of Venus, if the input current is sufficiently strong and this model is correct. The Venusian polar dipole shows the precise configuration and motion of Birkeland current pairs in plasma discharge experiments. That includes a surrounding spiral vortex. In 2006, scientists indeed found a similar vortex at the south pole of Venus. As we see in these images, it appears stunningly similar to twin current filaments studied in laboratories on Earth. But as Thornhill noted, there was no reason, other than an appeal to symmetry, for scientists to expect a similar vortex at the south pole of Venus. Thornhill explained that the mysterious polar vortices and Venus's superfast winds share the same source, incoming electrical currents from the Sun. He wrote, Venus Express science team members say they want to know how these vortices remain stable and where they get their energy. This goes to the heart of what drives the super-rotating upper atmosphere of Venus. Venus, as shown by its cometary plasma sphere, is still discharging strongly to the solar plasma. The enhanced infrared emission seen from the polar dipole is due to the dissipation of electrical energy in the upper atmosphere of Venus. The polar dipole has a variable rotation rate, and it varies the position of its axis of rotation with respect to that of the planet. It was observed to move 500 kilometers from the Venusian pole in less than a day, and return just as quickly. The variable nature of the electrical input to Venus via the Sun and the snaking about of the Birkeland currents explain both these characteristics. However, in 2005, Thornhill offered a similar outrageous prediction on the planet Saturn that science discovery also confirmed. In his analysis of the warm polar vortex discovered at Saturn's south pole, Thornhill wrote, The Electric Universe also predicts, experimentum crucis, that both poles should be hot, not one hot and the other cold. In 2008, the Cassini spacecraft confirmed the astonishing prediction. Astonishing, because the freezing cold North Pole had been deprived of sunlight for more than 12 years. The author of a paper on the discovery stated, We didn't expect it to have a hot spot at the North. Electric currents from an electric sun connected to planets and driving atmospheric and weather phenomena. How many enduring mysteries will be resolved when planetary scientists finally recognize these simple and logical concepts?